We do start with the Denver Broncos, right. who have had a long, long history and maybe would have been more, more difficult to do in the in the 20th century than the 21st century, but still many, many good players here yeah. in the 21st century. Yeah. And so let's get right into it. We'll take a look at uh, the list of players that Pete and uh, Gabby have compiled on a graphic here. Way to go, Gabby. She has been working Gabby very is, hard. I mean, we only have 97 graphics for this <laughs> podcast with 97 names on there. I know. Yeah, she she does not like Pete. She's, no, she no. will enjoy the hiatus as well. <laughs> uh, but well done, Gabby, and getting all these names in here and the dates when they played for the team. So right off the bat, this is how we do it. Who are you putting in slam dunk? Well, I think you're going to join in with the, mm-hmm. me here. I mean, right off the bat, I think the three guys in yellow are in, right? I mean, the three guys in yellow are in. Von Miller, Champ Bailey, Chris Harris Jr. I don't think there's any debate there. They're all in yellow because they were on an NFL all-decade team, either early in the 2000s or 2010 and on. And, I, you know, I mean, Champ Bailey, again, it's he's Hall of Famer. Von Miller, Hall of Famer. Chris Harris Jr., maybe not Hall of Famer, probably not. But one of the premier nickel cover guys we had of the the last decade, mm-hmm. and of course, huge part of why they won the Super Bowl and beat the Carolina Panthers in Super Bowl Fifty. So I think those three are pretty easy for me. Number four is pretty easy to me. I think it's Demarius Thomas without a without question. Agreed. Right. I mean, you just talk about you know first off stats, longevity, and the importance of his role for that team. I mean, it was up there. And they went to two Super Bowls because of Demarius Thomas and his ability to make big plays. So that's okay. We got four. Hmm. Now it gets a little tricky. I'm one to not go Rod Smith. Rod Smith, I know, had some years in the 2000s, but his prime years to me are still the end of the 90s. Yes. He doesn't embody like 21st century Bronco- Broncos. The two names I jump to here are Elvis Doomerville, mm-hmm. teammate of mine smaller pass rusher guy like one of these guys where you're like how can he really get 17 sacks or 15 sacks a year how 5 11 do 250 exactly right i mean you talk about like power packed in a small package right there or ryan clady ryan clady the tackle was another ex teammate of mine and certainly one of the one of the best tackles i ever played with so it would be one of those two for my money. There's Al Wilson on there. Al Wilson was loved by the Broncos fan base and everything there, but I don't know. I don't think his quality of play was up there with Doomerville or Clady. Akib Talib. Akib Talib is interesting, right? Because it was only a four-year stint there, yeah. but it was like shutdown <clears throat> island corner stints, right? Where you were like, well, no, Akib Talib is was one of the best corners in football, you know, but the. The problem is, is he was a Buccaneer for a little while, a Patriot for a little while, a Ram for a little while. Yeah. I tend to want to go Elvis Doomerville. So I do too. I okay. think Elvis Doomerville is definitely in. So he was a five-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro. I think he's in. I think so. But yeah, I know. you can also make a case for Ryan Clady. Yeah. Who was a two-time All-Pro himself. Right. Yeah, he's a franchise left tackle. I mean, that that's where it's tough. And, you know, that's where I feel like – the old linemen kind of get screwed in these drills sometimes because we just when it's a tie we go, let's go with the one with the sexier stats, mm-hmm. right? Now one of Pete says one of Doomerville's All Pros was with the Ravens. Yeah, it was. Yeah, two of his Pro Bowls too. Right, mm. right. So that that's where it, it's close. And then you know Ryan Clady, he was Denver, right, and then went to the Jets for a few years for at the end of his just career. One year. Just, just one year, just one. Okay, I thought maybe games. it was two. You know what? You were changing your mind. You want to go back to Ryan? You feeling Clady here? Let's do Ryan Clady. Okay. I think Ryan Clady. I think the fact that Doomerville, yeah, was a lot of the best of years were in Baltimore. You, you're, you're, yeah. He's not going in with Baltimore though, probably. No, I know. That's that's where it's tough. It it is tough, and and you know where you look at it, and you look at his his stats and some of the things he did too, where you just go. You know, it's he, he, a lot of sacks. What was it, 60, 63 sacks in Denver, yeah. something like that? You know, it was uh, more than Demarcus Ware. Yes. Yeah. We gave him his We gave him his just We due. gave him his we're love. Gonna, we're going to go Ryan Clady. Clady. We're going right. to be tough about this. We're, All right, cool. We're going to make hard decisions early on. Good. And Way to go. Easier as we Welcome go. to the squad, Ryan Clady. We got the five on there. So receiving yards. And we, that's it good anyways because Ryan Clady and I still keep in touch, and he good. he might beat my ass if he knows I didn't throw him on here. So let's <laughs> just do that. something to consider, <laughs> you <know>. too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the Denver Broncos' most receiving yards in the 2000s, Demarius Thomas far and away. He had 9,000. Rod Smith had 7,500 in the 2000s. 
specifically. Yeah, right. And, and Demarius had 60 touchdowns there, yeah. too. So he was awesome. He was, he was he awesome. Was, he was. was the man. He was. He was. He could do everything. I mean, he was a guy that, you know, could run routes and do that, but he was big and he could be a playmaker yeah. and, you know, catch a slant from Tim Tebow and run for a 60-yard touchdown, right? I mean, that's that's the kind of guy he was. Now, I will say this, too. Brandon Marshall was the start of his career, mm. right? But, like, for the amount of time he was there, whew, he was special during that period. I mean, he really was. He was, as we've talked about and waxed poetically about him before, I mean, he was the first of his kind in the NFL as far as that huge receiver where you were like, wait – he can run routes like this at that size and make people miss in space at that size and all that. Um, it, it, it packed a lot, of a, a, a lot of punch there for Brandon Marshall. It just wasn't a whole lot of years there. And not necessarily what stinks about receiver, too, is your team and your quarterback and your offense, of course, are, it, it's, that's all very you know, influential, influential in what you do. And yep. he was stuck on some, some not-so-good teams, too. So hard choices, the Denver Broncos, we got the five there. Boom. With Von Miller, Champ Bailey, Chris Harris, Jr., Demarius Thomas, and Ryan Clady. Yo, 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 thanks for watching, homies. It's the offseason, but you know there's no offseason for us here at Unbutton. Me, Ahmed Farid, we're going to hit all the stories. So hit subscribe for us, okay? We got a ton coming up. My draft prospect rankings, my Sims Top 40 quarterback countdown, and videos of me and NFL QBs playing catch and talking about their development and mechanics. Again, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Peace out, homies. See you soon.